Blessed are those who are not expectant, for they shall not be disappointed. And I say, blessed are the young, for they shall inherit our national debts. May your future not be borrowed. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation Limited, NNPC, recently claimed that it has secured a $3 billion loan from Afrazim Bank in Egypt for the purpose of supporting the Naira, which is crashing. This is despite the plunging of our crude oil output from $1.25 million uh, million barrel per day in June to $1.1 million barrel per day in July 2023. According to the editorial board of the African Oil and Gas Report, the drop in crude oil out output, which has helped worsen the value of the Naira, is largely due to NMPC Limited inability to approve, improve its technical efficiency. Example is the consistent low output of the 10,000 barrel per day at Okono Opoho feed in OML 119 offshore Niger Delta, which ordinarily can produce 30,000 barrel per day if technical competence is enhanced. How about the OML 98, which was review, revoked from Pan Ocean Oil in um, 2019 and now completely run by an MPC? To date, they are unable to grow production beyond 4,000 barrels per day. The list is endless. And mind you, all these mentions have nothing to do with vandalism or ge uh, geological activities, but lack of focus on technical competence. And now they don't become central bank when they borrow money for and on behalf of government. May our future not be borrowed. Anyway, you know, go blame them. After all, in 2015, Ibe Kachuku, who was MD and MPC then, sacked almost all the directors in NMPC on various grounds. And we held them then because we thought Buhari and his government knew what they were doing. Unfortunately, they almost borrowed away our future while they were living. Despite the abundance of our natural resources, do we really need to borrow? And who should be doing the borrowing? Is NMPC no longer a limited liability company? And then the so-called small fraction of our crude oil, crude oil that NMPC is using to guarantee this loan in question. Who owns it? Is it an NPC or Nigerian Federation? If it belongs to Nigeria, can an NPC use the proceeds of what doesn't belong to them to borrow money? How would this loan reduce or stabilize the cost of PMS or FWE that is tied to the same NPC's direct sale, direct purchase, or swap arrangement and the landing cost of the product? Are the details of the loan made public? I be we no suppose no, as they always tell us say no be swap arrangement. If an NPC is not swapping crude for cash, then what type of arrangement is this current one? You know, say that they get different name for the, or the different arrangement. Couldn't an NPC have done a forward sale arrangement with a well-known and reputable international commodity company that can easily provide you the needed cash? Anyway, plenty questions, few answers. Yet, our future is being borrowed away. Apart from the crude oil lost to vandalism, what is the accurate quantity of our crude oil so daily that we still are borrowing against? Is there accurate measurement or metering for our crude that we sell? Femi Falana SN recently acu accused the international oil companies of owing Nigeria $62 billion. Why is the government not talking about, about it or they are not interested in recovering the money? Why borrowing is good? Can't we put accurate and appropriate measures in place? in both the downstream, midstream, and upstream sector to avoid borrowing away the future of our generation yet unborn? At the downstream sector, why are we not interrogating or conducting a forensic audit on the NMPC pricing template to be sure that the subsidy we call fraud is not being transferred by some people from government to the ordinary people who can no longer breathe? At the midstream level, we have borrowed money and we still continue to borrow to pump it to our refineries without producing a drop of oil. In 2018, Buhari government promised that the refineries would work by 2019. And in 2023, President Tinubu has once again shifted their workability to December. And they said, soon reach. Can they offload these refineries to reliable, renowned private companies to run on a sharing formula? Why are we afraid to privatize them, but would rather borrow and steal through them, yet we celebrate Dangote refinery? At the upstream end, we must also start implementing the requirement for all licensees and leases to have a metering plan approved by the upstream commission for the measurement of petroleum product from its producing license or lease. I will therefore advocate 
that until the current government and administration put their foot down to plug the above loopholes by conducting a forensic audit of NMPC Limited and its pricing template, and also consider the offloading of refineries to competent, reputable private companies, and encourage modular refineries as well as give the needed political support to the downstream, midstream, and upstream agency to plug loopholes in the value chain, like accurate metering of our crude sale as a way of raising much needed revenue. We just wake up one day and realize we have borrowed away our 10th generation into slavery with no redemption in sight. Well, you go call her grammar, but me, I don't talk my own. Until next week, kindly follow us on all our social media platforms shown on your screen. But we do not only criticize, we also advocate a solution. As we pray for our future not to be borrowed, may posterity be the judge of those blindly borrowing away our future. I hear you say amen. See you next week.